Astronomers claim we are living in a nebula. Nebulae are like universe's supermodels. They are extremely gorgeous and everyone wants to photograph them. However, they are not as well known as you may imagine. Please allow me to clarify. The term nebula has always been a little perplexing because it has been used to designate a variety of things. Scientists have been able to classify them thanks to some astounding findings. They discovered that some are so massive that they span hundreds of light years. The really interesting aspect is that most nebulae are where stars are born. Take for example the Orion Nebula. It's one of the most well-known, and it's also one of the most photographed objects in the night sky. This stunning nebula has revealed how stars and even entire planetary systems evolve. These objects are made up of clouds of gas and dust. They begin to generate new stars when they collapse due to their own gravity. It's like watching a cosmic nursery come to life. These magnificent things may not be as well known as they deserve to be, yet they contain the key to comprehending the origins of our universe. Would you believe me if I said you live in one of them? Follow along in this video to learn more about it. Hello and welcome to Z. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to receive our daily videos. What a nebula is not. Consider yourself an early astronomer looking up at the night sky and spotting something unique. You notice a hazy thing that like a cloud among the flashing stars. Curiosity gets the best of you and you decide to call it a nebula. Years later, much to your amazement, another astronomer discovers that what you thought was a nebula is actually nothing more than a cloud. It's a galaxy or a stellar cluster, a massive structure with billions of stars. The term nebula harkens back to the early days of astronomy when anything cloudy was classified as such. Our comprehension has grown in the modern era. We now know that galaxies are massive assemblages of gas, dust, and billions of stars held together by gravity. Each galaxy is like a bustling metropolis with innumerable solar systems and their planets. Star clusters, on the other hand, are tiny groups of 10 or more stars that form from the same interstellar cloud. These clusters, which vary in size and composition, can be found across the universe. Some of the most spectacular are globular clusters, which circle galaxies and contain hundreds of thousands, if not millions of stars. These clusters are particularly noteworthy since they contain some of the earliest stars yet discovered. Their age provides us with insight into the history of our universe, revealing secrets from a long time ago. As you can see, a nebula is neither a galaxy nor a cluster. So what precisely is it? What exactly is a nebula? A nebula is a large cloud of dust and gases, mostly hydrogen and helium that exists in the expanse of space. It can come from the ashes of a dying star, such as a supernova explosion. As previously stated, nebulae are thought to be star nurseries. When you think about it, these captivating structures represent the universe's never-ending cycle of birth and death. When stars near the end of their lives, they erupt in cataclysmic supernovae, dispersing their remnants throughout space. These remains subsequently create the groundwork for future star formation, continuing the cosmic dance of creation and death. A nebula's composition consists of dust and gases that are distributed throughout, although gravity can cause dust and gas clumps to clump together. As these clusters grow in size, their gravitational pull becomes stronger. Nebulae are objects that exist in the cosmic region between stars. NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope captured an intriguing photograph of it as an odd eyeball-like figure. This nebula, which is located in the constellation Aquarius, is located 700 light years away from our planet. It is the nearest nebula to Earth of those known. Its existence gave academics significant insights into the dynamics of stellar evolution and the mechanisms involved in star formation. Scientists can solve cosmic mysteries and gain a better knowledge of the universe we live in by examining nebulae like the helix. According to astrophysicists, the solar system is essentially engulfed in one of these nebulae, the local interstellar cloud. The local interstellar cloud. 
The local interstellar cloud is an emission-type nebula, which is composed of ionized gases that produce light of various wavelengths. This gas is hotter than the sun's surface temperature, with an average temperature of 7,000 degrees Kelvin. The hottest particles can reach million Kelvin temperatures. This nebula, on the other hand, is extremely sparse. It has a very low density of about 0.3 particles per cubic centimeter. In comparison, the Earth's atmosphere near the edge of space, 100 kilometers above sea level, contains approximately 1.2 times 10 to 13 molecules per cubic centimeter, decreasing to approximately 50 million at 450 kilometers altitude. As a result, the gas in the nebula has a very low heat capacity. It would hardly warm you up if you were in the center of it. That is why, even though we are immersed in it, we do not burn. But how do we know we're involved? The local interstellar cloud is a fascinating and one-of-a-kind cosmic phenomena. It is a form of nebula composed of ionized gases that radiate light in various colors. These gases are extremely hot, even hotter than the sun's surface. The temperature can even exceed a million degrees Kelvin. The local interstellar cloud, despite its high heat, is actually rather scarce. It has a relatively low density, with only 0.3 particles per cubic centimeter. To put that in context, the Earth's atmosphere near the edge of space contains approximately 1.2 times 10 to 13 molecules per cubic centimeter. So even though we are surrounded by this nebula, there aren't enough particles in it to severely heat us up, so we don't have to worry about getting burned. Scientists can learn about the origin and evolution of stars and galaxies by studying this specific nebula. It also provides useful information on space conditions and their potential impact on our planet and life on Earth. However, how can scientists know we're in the local interstellar cloud? Before continuing, please let us know if you liked or disliked the video so that we can make it better for you. Also, don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell to ensure you don't miss any of our daily videos. How do we know? The answer to this question is simple. They gathered this information using various scientific tools and observations. Scientists were able to determine the nebula's composition and features by observing the very dim light emitted by its gases. They also assessed the particle density in the cloud and compared it to other locations in space. They concluded that we are indeed placed within the local interstellar cloud based on these data. There isn't much more to it than that. It is simply a matter of collecting a large amount of data, analyzing it, and drawing some conclusions. It is difficult and time-consuming labor, but it pays off in the end. Perhaps more intriguing than proving its existence is learning about its structure. Indeed, examining the features of this nebula is crucial for us since it teaches us more about the universe and how it functions. The Local Interstellar Cloud organization, the Local Interstellar Cloud, or LIC, may be faint, yet it has a distinct structure, much like any other nebula. Scientists have revealed that, despite its boundary-like appearance, it has a defined structure. To put its enormity into perspective, emitting light from one end of the LIC would take 30 years for someone on the other end to perceive the light. This tremendous time delay is caused by the LIC's astonishing distance of 30 light years. The fact that this cloud is not stationary and exists irrespective of our movement adds to its allure. In essence, we are an airplane flying through the clouds, with the LIC as our celestial surrounds. However, just as an airplane ultimately leaves the clouds, we will say goodbye to the LIC in about 20,000 years. Super Bubble, Remnant Super Shell Astronomers have discovered an unexpected fact about the local interstellar cloud. It is not alone, in actuality it is a part of a much larger cloud formation known as a local bubble. The adjacent G cloud, which the solar system will enter as it bids farewell to the local interstellar cloud, is one of the clouds within this super bubble. The density of atoms inside the local bubble is much lower than the average density of the local interstellar cloud. It is expected to have a density of only 0.05 atoms per cubic centimeter. 
This variation in density can be traced to supernova explosions that happened within the last 10 to 20 million years, which formed these clouds. These explosions ejected matter and gas, resulting in clouds. However, some of the atoms that were discharged became stranded in the middle of nowhere, resulting in the development of denser zones. This is how our local interstellar cloud is thought to have developed. Jaminga, a pulsar in the Gemini constellation, was thought to be the relic of a single supernova that gave rise to the entire local bubble. Recent research, however, suggests that several supernovae from the Pleiades were also responsible for its birth. As a result, astronomers call the local bubble a remnant supershell. We enter a new domain of interstellar space as we travel beyond these nebulae. The enormity of the local bubble illustrates the universe's interconnection, emphasizing that our solar system is only a small component of a greater cosmic ecosystem. Astronomers aim to find even more secrets and develop a better grasp of the intricate dynamics that define our galactic neighbors through continuous investigation and study. Alright guys, this video has come to an end, thanks for watching. What is it like to live in a nebula? Please let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.